Hello, beautiful souls. So this week's topic, it's going to be like the whole week, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. <laughs> the The playlist this week that we'll build, it's about letting go. It's the letting go playlist. So the topics we're going to cover are toxic people, material attachments, religious indoctrination and dogma, non-serving habits, and wrapping things up with people pleasing. So we're going to touch on things that I have touched on before, but in a different format. And I know that the frequency is much, much different today than it was when I covered these things in the past. And so you may be in a position now to receive it differently. And if you do feel triggered, I again just remind you that's just putting a pin in the map of your shadow work. We no longer get triggered about things when we've worked through the shame, blame, guilt, trauma. And so I invite you to make a note of it and dig deep as to why, where it is, where's the source of this pain where's the source of this trigger because it's really not about me and what I say your triggers show you where you have work to do now again if you are looking to clear your energy so that you can navigate this journey navigate the ascension journey um, from a clear energy field please come by violetlotusenergy.com and schedule your QET session that is the first step and you really can then communicate with your spirit team. You have a clear access to your higher self. Nothing is distorted. That is what negative distortions do. They distort your truth, your reality, and your messages, your guidance. So um, we can help with one-on-one -on -one coaching. We can help in all sorts of different situations, which every person feels like their situation is unique and different because it is, but on the mass scale, we really all sub soul contract, very, very common hurdles. And so much of what you're dealing with or needing to deal with and procrastinating or bypassing, we can help you with because we've already done it and we're working through it ourselves. So don't ever feel like you're alone. You're never, ever alone. You just don't have access to those beings that are around you to help you yet. And we can help you with that. Okay, so today's talk is about toxic people. We all have them. We all have them. And I'm going to hopefully give you some basics on how to identify them if you're confused, if you're in denial, which is quite common. Also, I'm going to just define it for you as per Google. <laughs> And I'm going to give you some, some wisdom that I found along the way. And hopefully my intention is that you pick up on something that you, it can be your, your best next step. It might be your best first step. I don't know, but we got to start taking steps out of the negative loop that we've been on so that we can change and co-create a better reality here. That's the goal. So let's dive in. First, I'm going to define, define toxic people. Someone who brings conflict and negativity to your life. They're often controlling, manipulative, and sometimes abusive. They have zero regard for others' true well-being. I would love to say that this doesn't bring certain people to mind, but it certainly does. I know in my own life, I've had so many toxic people and they did show up to teach me lessons. So I give them gratitude as I kick them down the road. <laughs> okay. So what do you want to do? First thing you want to do is establish their soul status. Now it is our divine right to know the energy of who we're dealing with. It is our divine right. It is how it is how things are navigated outside of this dimension. It's how things are navigated in higher consciousness. So we feel into the energy of that being. Now, what the matrix does for us is it 
it numbs us to the cues that we get. So we have to remember and remind ourselves that we have the power to discern this stuff on our own. So you want to establish their soul status. This helps you determine their place or not in your life. Now, when you really tune into your body with regards to your message cues and how your body responds to things, um, you're you're tapping into clairsentient. Now, we're all born with clair abilities that usually in our childhood, um, our, our, the people in charge of us do a really good job of making sure we know it's just our imagination. It's nothing real and to ignore it. But that is a disservice. They have done us a disservice. They have guided us away from our own sovereignty and our own abilities to navigate the world. So then we put our trust and faith in, in the wrong places instead of being within ourselves. So I want to really give you a, a, a vote of confidence that that knot that you feel in your stomach every time you're around, fill in the, the blank, um, it's your body telling you you're not meant to be there. It's your body telling you you're not meant to exchange energy with this person. It, it can even be a, a phone call. It, certain one calls you and every time you have a conversation with them, you feel sick to your stomach. Like you, or you have this heaviness in your chest or you get a bad headache. There's a, a myriad of things that your body will, will try to give you as a cue to pivot and turn away. And so the best thing I can say is to, be cognizant of that. Start to become aware of it and not be dismissive because quite honestly, there are no coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. And we as a people, as a population have done a really poor job of recognizing our clues because we just follow the masses. Your mind is not to be trusted. It is the most manipulated organ in your body. It started when you were very, very young. Just like I said, the people that were in charge of taking care of us, they fed us the, the nursery rhymes and all the things that were actually all from like satanic things. And we were none the rise. We then went through school who, you know, all of that teaching is all based on looking outside of yourself for truth, for education for what is right and what is wrong. And that is exact opposite. All of that is within us. So I want you to also realize that those that lean heavily toward their mind, they're really in their ego and they're in that egoic mind. I'm going to cover that. The ego is not, it's not capable of fighting from a place of neutrality versus your higher self. Your higher self, your true higher self is always going to guide you in, in a, from a place of neutrality, kindness, compassion, love, support, non-manipulative, okay, non-fear-mongering, no threats, none of that stuff. If you think you're talking to your higher self and you're getting put down or you're getting called names or you're getting told to do things and if you don't do things bad things will happen that is not your true higher self that's a trickster energy and that comes from the ego the ego feeds it based on doubt judgment fear and resistance to change your heart it's also untrustworthy really due to all the trauma and pain and and heartache that we go through in life until you get really really down your ascension journey and you really start to heal the heart chakra and the heart space and tear down the walls that we built around our heart it's not trustworthy because it's just such a sponge for love that it will take it in the wrong places so what can you go with what is your guidance when you're all jumbled up and the messages are distorted and and you can't um you can't trust your heart well, you can trust your gut. Your gut is unfuckwithable. I don't know if that's a word. I made it up. I like it. It's true. Your gut is going to tell you. I, I had a earthly sister. She's never been kind that I know of to anyone or anything. We quit uh, communicating 20 some odd years ago. 
prior to that time, every time I had interaction with her, I got sick to my stomach every time. And I thought it was just me. I thought I had something wrong with me. And my parents thought I had something wrong with me. <laughs> Guess what? They brought me to the doctors and there was never anything found. No matter how, what age, it, it, it had happened all throughout my life until I cut her out of my life. And then it stopped. She, that negative energy, was the catalyst for that. My body telling me, do not spend time with her. Do not energy exchange with her. Do not be around her. But because of the label, sister, I thought I was supposed to be spending time with her. That's what I thought I was supposed to be doing. Again, it's another matrix trap. So you can definitely it. And most people disregard their gut until their gut sends them to the, the bathroom until you got a puke or, or poop. And then all of a sudden you're paying attention and you immediately think it must be that I ate. Well, it's sometimes it's something you ate, but also it's sometimes one around you who's making you physically ill. Trust your body, headaches, itchy and change in bowel habits, stomach aches, loud ear ringing. There are times where I, I will get a super loud ear. My ear is going to pop ear ringing. And I know it is a super urgent attention to me message is coming in my importance and um I didn't know that I didn't have any clue about that until the last couple of years of my life and so did I have that before I absolutely did <laughs> what did I do about it I just pop ears you know I thought oh my you stay too clogged or like all these other medical reasons you know it is denial, plain and simple. It's denial. So really want to bring that to your attention. There's probably some body cues that you're ignoring or excusing or dismissing in some way. And if you stop and think about them, if you become cognizant of it and you recognize when it happens in relationship to person, place, a thing that's happening, and you start to put those dots, it's, it's very illuminating. So now that you've taken inventory of your circle, so do like your immediate circle. So if you're in a family, you're going to do, um, you know, spouse, partner, children, um, siblings, parents, and leave it at that. And then you're going to want to do uh, the, the next circle, which is usually your work or school circle, your, or your, your neighbors, like that you're interacting with regular basis and then you're going to do like extended family and and things like that you're just going to keep going around and, and checking on things and the sad truth is that we contract so the, the sold beings s-o-u-l-e-d the sold beings because there's a thing you cannot have a soul and be functioning perfectly normal my book is available on amazon uh we tend to soul contract life surrounded by those that either don't have a soul and don't have the ability to have a soul or are dark intended and their soul is dark and so when we the light drops into that poor family now you're dealt, you're dealing with mother, father, sister, cousins, aunts, uncle, you know what I mean? And when you start to do this um, inventory, it is very common for the truth to be so illuminating and immediately you're like, freaking knew it. Like I knew that person was in PC. I knew that that person was in portal. I knew and didn't have a soul and I just kept with them because I thought I needed to because they have a label matrix label mind you. mother father, sister brother partner husband this is the thing when we are sitting with the karmic board and we're developing our new soul con 
upcoming incarnation, it's not a cakewalk. We have to go through what our soul needs to evolve, which is hurdles, obstacles, events that that are catalysts for growth. We grow when we're uncomfortable. We grow through trauma. We grow through pain. We grow whenever we are forced. So whenever we come into these lives that are surrounded by darkness, that is, your entire childhood is a huge catalyst for growth and change. And you have duality and you have free will choice the entire time. So whenever you go through your accountability phase is what I call it. I call it spiritual accountability. Okay. So whenever you're trying to determine why your life is so fucking crazy, you have to be willing to take inventory and do spiritual accountability on who you're giving your power away to. Every single one that is not deserving of your time and energy, but you continue to engage with them because of a label, that's your free will choice and you're giving your power away. So you have the opportunity to take it back. And this is what I encourage you to do. This is what we're supposed to do. The divine father, mother, God, source creator, mother, Sophia, they want for us to be sovereign they want for us to maintain and protect our power in a clear way. And we can have benevolence. We can have love, compassion, kindness, and empathy for everyone. That doesn't mean we let them just walk over us like a doormat. It doesn't mean that we give all of ourselves to them. Okay. There are boundaries that are in place. Boundaries have to be set. If you don't know which end is up, how are you going to define a boundary? You got to start somewhere. And you really have to start with your core group of individuals that you interact with all the time and then relate. How does that make you feel? And I don't mean to sound like a therapist. That's not what I'm trying to do. Your body will give you the feelings of home and love and nurturing when you're with a soul family member. And it could be a coworker. It could be no one in your earthly family. It could be someone across the freaking country. But this is the soul cord, the quantum entanglement that no matter where that other being is, you are connected. And you can feel closer to that being than you do the people sitting next to you on the couch because they don't have a soul. I want you to think about that. And, and I'm, I'm saying like, bypass the judgment, bypass the religious dogma, bypass what you thought you knew. Just ask yourself, is this why so-and-so always gives me the creeps? <laughs> yes, it's something. There has to be a reason. So now we, this is a very common scenario. So now you've done your inventory. And you realize that you're married to an NPC and it's a karmic relationship. And somewhere out there is your soul mate your twin flame, your energy essence, the other half of your soul. Now, what do you do? Well, you have to understand that you soul contracted as did your twin flame to reunite at some point later in your life, that that karmic relationship you're in is for a purpose and it is to teach you things. It's to allow you growth through uncomfortableness, through trauma, through pain, through heartache. That's when we grow. And then you have the free will choice to make the adult decisions. Okay, this no longer serves me. This is the definition of unhappiness. And I, I do what truly makes my heart, my soul sing. And that's not this relationship. And start to take the steps as an adult, as a sovereign being, to align yourself back to your soul path. Because you're meant to do that. You're meant to do that. That is one of the biggest things that the divine has such a hard time conveying to people who align more to religious dogma in a book than true soul guidance, because you are not meant to stay with someone karmic who is not good for you because you took vows. Who created those vows, by the way? I'm going to tell you something. I, I have a much better understanding of AKA marriage, relationships, whatever. 
in higher dimensions and where we all came from when you're a soul being, you volunteer to come here and you descend, you come down, you know, you from an ascended place. And so anyway, there's no rings. There's no licenses. That's made up stuff for totally nefarious purposes. Okay. And the covenant of marriage has nothing to do with a paper. It has nothing to do with getting married in a church. It has nothing to do with any religion at all. The soul being of a, of a woman, of a divine feminine, and the soul being of a divine masculine choose to enter into union and they stay there until it no longer serves them or for forever. Now, my twin flame union, we've been together for millions and millions and millions of years, all sorts of things. And there's times where we are not incarnated together. There's times where we incarnate together and one dies early and the other one lives. And there's all sorts of different things that we contract to do for growth purposes. Like it, it serves a purpose. It does not mean <laughs> that we're meant to just be miserable. That's not what the divine ever wants for us, no matter whether it's soul contracted or not. They always want you to go back to your inner knowing, go back to your power, realize who and what you are, and course correct back to source. So that is by far the biggest factor that the biggest hurdle of shadow work that people have to go through. They get to that part and they don't make the decision to honor themselves. They make the decision based on children, family dynamics, all sorts of other different reasons. They don't honor themselves. They don't do what's in their highest and best good. They worry about other people's feelings more than their own. So I really, really, really do intend for you to truly be very honest and very real in this and also self-loving and self-compassionate and give yourself the self-care that you deserve because you deserve to have a life that is authentic and sovereign and full of bliss and joy. And anything less than that is up to you to change. No one else is going to change it for you because you have free will choice. So we're going to get out of that. And you decide now that your priority is your energy body. Your priority is the essence of you. You understand now that the body that you're in is an avatar. It's temporary. It's just for this life. And you have had many, many lives and you will have more. And so you realize that the, the, the temporariness of where you are and things shift in perspective. You understand now that the energy essence of you has to be a priority because all these energy vampires are coming for it. So you make it a priority in your life that you're meditating, you're grounding, you're connecting to, to source creator, you're connecting to your guides, and you can feel then when someone has entered into your energy field and they are, are flung something at you like a distortion, an entity, an implant, um, a curse, a spell, and you quickly get rid of that. So you want to stay clear and you don't want to backslide. You are motivated to stay clear because you understand now how that feels and it feels great. And it's opening up a whole new world, a whole new perspective of life. And you want to keep that open, clear communication with source and your guides, archangels and the angels, your guardian angel. Um, your family guides that choose to be a guide for you because you're redefining what living is, okay? Because we we come through early education, education, whatever the matrix, and our and our narratives that that put us into into lanes. They put us into boxes. They put us into labels, and you have to come out of that and redefine your life because it really doesn't fit in a box, a lane, or a label. You're an infinite energy presence, you see? So in order to do that, in order to embody that, you got to get out of the box and you got to change lanes. So this is why being cleared, having a cleared energy body is vital. It's vital. And it's not a, 
magic wand. Okay. I can clear you, but if you don't do the work to stay cleared, it's for naught. You have to be willing to do the shadow work and you have to be willing to dig deep and you have to be willing to be authentic. And that all requires shadow work. I, I don't care who you are, you're going to be doing it or you're going to suffer the consequences for not doing it. The most important and effective thing you can do to help those, which is the next common question, what can I do to help so-and-so that doesn't have a soul? What can I do to help so-and-so that's an NPC? What can I do to help so-and-so that's an organic portal? Well, you have to also honor their path and their plan because it's not up to you to control, number one. So separating yourself from being the savior of anyone. We all have our own soul contracts. We all have our, our own plan and path. And we all have to save ourselves. Now, what you can do and the very best thing to do is to focus on your own healing and your own evolution and expansion. As you ascend, which is your frequency rises, as your frequency rises, that ripples through all the beings around you. It ripples through to the land. It ripples through the planet, uh, the animals, the birds, everything, the people. And so what will eventually happen, and this plays out time and time again, is those that are like NPC, organic portals, soulless beings, they have a very low frequency. They don't have the ability to have a higher frequency. And being around those with high frequency is very uncomfortable for them. And so they will push back and try to lower your frequency. But if you stay resolute and sovereign and authentic, they will just flee. They will fall away from you. And you will see that, that physical uncomfortableness that they're in. I see it all the time. It kind of makes me giggle because it's a telltale sign that they're low frequency and very uncomfortable by my frequency and they run, they scatter. And I, I just accept it. You're not meant to be in my timeline. You're not meant to be in my vortex. That's okay. And just keep moving in your direction. So this is where another big spot where people go, oh, that's so unkind to yourself. Can you stop thinking about everybody else in your life more than you? Stop. That's, that's part of the manipulation. That's how they get us. Start giving. If you gave 10% of what you give to everyone else to yourself, at the end of the week, you're going to feel so much better. Just imagine if you increase that percentage exponentially. We can do this. This is your power. This is your free will choice. It is up to you. So you have focused on your healing. You got your practice in play. You get up really early. You appreciate and give gratitude and love to the sunrise. And you're meditating and you're connecting and you're feeling this peace and bliss and love. And all of a sudden a bomb goes off in your house and you're distracted and you get pulled back in to all the things. Well, this is a test, clear and simple. The ones that want you to continue to feed them energetically and to con continue to be the place where they dump all their crap and expect for you to clear it up and clean it up and make heads or tails out of it. And then they just leave you in the dust because you've done all the work for them. They're going to keep pushing back on you and you have to double down and on your resolute motivation to stay in line with your soul path and be like, like, um, you want to be like an MSNBC reporter. <laughs> When the cars are on fire and the bombs are going off behind them and they go, this is mostly a peaceful protest. Yeah, that's how you want to be. You want to just have blinders on because that stuff's not for you. Okay, it's meant to derail you and distract you. It's not for you. You just keep full steam ahead. Toxic people want nothing more than your energy. And they want to dump all their crap on you and they want you to be their counselor and they want you to be their banker and their mother <laughs> and all these different things. And what the divine wants for you is to be authentic and tell your truth and be empowered to do so. 
And those two things do not correlate. So you're going to have friction. And in friction, there is growth. There is train change and transmutation. Allow it. Embrace it. In fact, invite it in. You really want things to change? Start making changes. You have to. It's not going to change for you unless you decide to change for you. When we start to talk about healthy boundaries with people, especially the ones that have just recently gotten clear and they're starting, their abilities are starting to come online and they're starting to get messages and they don't know what to do with that. It can be very confusing, especially for those that have never had healthy boundaries before in their life ever. And so you have to go back to source. You have to go back to the center of you and define where is your happiness? Where is your safe space? Where is your peace? What does that look like? When we give, 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 give to everyone else, we don't even know where what our safe space looks like. We don't know what makes us happy because we've been just making everyone else happy. So you got to give yourself that time. You got to give yourself the compassion and the empathy and the kindness to heal and redefine what is you. It's really remembering when you allow it to come through, you go, oh, this is that, this is that girl I've been looking for. It's me or guy, but you know, so you start to define your healthy boundaries and then you realize how good that feels and how authentic and sovereign that feels. And you're like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to stay right here. And then one of your karmic relationships show up and they start testing those boundaries right away. They're backing up the bump, the dump truck full of shit. They're about to dump in your lap. And it's up to you. Pause and listen to this. You control yourself. You do not control other people. A healthy boundary is for you. Like you can make other people aware of what your healthy boundaries are. But for some, that's just a challenge to push that boundary back. It's for you to defend. It's for you to enforce. If you're not willing to enforce it, they're willing to plow you over. See what's happening here? You define the boundary, it's for you. You enforce the boundary, you strengthen your power. You take your power back. Every time you do it, you take your power back. Every time you do that, this is source. That's my girl. That's exactly how it happens. There are times where big events are happening and we're enforcing boundaries and we're defending source creator and the, the battles won by the light. And we hear cheers and roars from our angels and archangels. That's because we are honoring the divine and our sovereign power period. That's all that we have to do. But this world doesn't tell you that because it's totally manipulated in a patriarchal society. So whenever you get to the point where you're really feeling into in energy situations with your intuition and your discernment and you go, yeah, this no longer serves me well, I'm going to go the other direction. You can fully anticipate that as you start walking away, they're going to jump in front of you. Hold up. Wait a minute. You've always been the one you've always been the one that did so and so we could always count on you what's wrong with you you see all the guilt the shame the blame psh, just pouring it on just deflect it this is not for me i want nothing to do with it that is all your business have fun leave the situation and let it go let it go okay let it go. That is not your baggage to carry around. We don't need to, a freight train behind us full of all the baggage that people have dumped in our lap. It's time to let that shit go. So you enforce it. You start to cut ties with people. And then when I say cut ties, that's cutting cords. You're cutting that energetic cord that connects you to that being because as long as the cord is there, they have a connection to your energy and they will siphon it off. They can also um, send negative energy to you as a retaliation and a way to lower your frequency and lower your vibration. And so you want to cut the cord and you want to block their energy. 
they will continue to push back until they find a new target or they get tired of having their own attacks because you're now defending your sovereignty. But you understand now that you played a role in those habits. You played a role in all of that non-serving behavior. You played a role in inviting these people in that drained your energy. And you played a role in keeping them there. So you have to forgive yourself. And you want to give yourself love and you want to give gratitude to the entire scenario because without it, you would not have woken up to what was happening, what was transpiring, what you were allowing, what they were doing and grow. You want to grow, grow, grow with every time you do that, it requires a little LFG, love, forgiveness, and gratitude of the event of the situation because growth doesn't happen when you're comfortable sitting on the couch watching a sitcom. It just does it. So now you have a better soul expansion focus. And this is your clear energy focus. And your spirit team assists you. And you're remembering who you are. And that you've never been alone. And you've always had assistance. But they could never take your life over. You had to wake up to call them in. And now you're working with your team, with your spirit team. And you're talking to your guardian angels and, and all the things. And if you don't know who your spirit team is, we can also assist you in identifying that after you're clear and making sure that you are communicating in a safe way. So when we discover our born abilities, so you go through your QET session and you start in, to understand what your abilities are and you realize that you're not crazy and you realize that the voice in your head is really not yourself talking to yourself, but it's your higher self talking to you or your guides. If you're clairaudient, I mean, sometimes people go, Oh, I thought that voice was just me, but it didn't sound like me. Uh, <laughs> Cause it was like aunt Peg who died three decades ago, whatever. It sounded just like her <laughs> and they never put two and two together. This is very, very real. It happens all the time. That's okay. You want to just get to rim relearn or re-know who you are in an energy sense. So that requires letting go of all the stuff that is not truly in your highest and best good. So you want to know your true self, what feeds your soul, and you want to embody that. So you have to try new things. You have to be brave. You have to have a little bit of courage and a whole lot of faith, right? You want to watch for those who are triggered the more you care for yourself, the more caring and compassionate healing and love you give to yourself. When you see other people triggering you and telling you how selfish you are to take time away from them to heal yourself, you need to cut them out of your life as soon as possible. True love and beings that are, are truly meant to be with you want you to heal. They want you to know what makes you happy. They want you to have what makes you happy. Even if that takes you away from them. That's true love. Learn the difference. Enforce your healthy boundaries and give yourself permission to detach from people that try to guilt you into caring for them or guilt you into doing things the way you used to do. Because this is a big aha. Every day, you are a new person. Every day you grow. Every day there are upgrades. Every day there are activations coming in. Why do you think we get beat with all this solar activity, CMEs and light codes, and then the space races are sending us help. The Pleiadians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the, Sy the Syrians, the Lyrans, they're all sending us what we need on a, on a crystalline DNA activation scale so that we can fully remember and embody who and what we are. Well, in order to allow that, in order to have room in our being, in our vessel for the light, you got to get, you got to sweep out those shadows. You got to clean out the closets and unpack the boxes. So you have room for your, your new activations, your new abilities. This is not selfishness. N never let anyone tell you that. This is what self-love and self-healing and self-compassion look like. 
And it's why we, we never had it. We were never taught this. We were never shown this and, and any semblance of it was squashed under negative connotations of selfishness or self-centeredness when in fact it's the opposite because the more that you heal yourself the more that you help heal the world if you want to change things you change yourself if you want to heal the world you're healed yourself that's where we start that's why they didn't want us to know because they wanted to keep the world in a low vibratory fear state so that they could easily control the masses but it's time for that to end and you to take your power back so this will immediately result in masks falling off. You will have people that have been very disingenuous that can no longer hide how frustrated that they are that they can't manipulate you anymore. And they will just come out and say it because they feel completely entitled to manipulate you because you have let them for so long. So again, you're going to be pre presented with another free will choice. And what are you going to do? Are you going to turn your back on yourself or not? I implore you to choose you. Start there. Choose to enforce your boundaries. That is for you to do. Choose to hold other people accountable. Huge. Give that pile of shit back to them and have them carry it home. Because it's not your stuff. You're working through your stuff and this is what it looks like. They need to do that for themselves or not, but don't come dump it on your front door. Allow those that pivot away from you to keep on walking. Don't beg for them to come back because they have nothing for you that serves your new grown into sovereignty. Because again, you're a new person today than you were yesterday. You were no longer the one that encountered them however long ago. Be honest. Be authentic. Whenever you realize so-and-so doesn't have a soul, can't have a soul because they're an NPC, been doing all this negative shit in your life and you don't have to put up with it anymore, be honest. It could look like this. I realized our friendship was very toxic for me. I made healthy changes and you becoming triggered just confirmed what my intuition was showing me. You're not a true friend, and you're not in the highest and best good for me. Free yourself and myself from this from this relationship and walk away. Uh, give yourself permission to be sovereign. That's a huge deal. Give yourself permission ap unapologetically. You have to make yourself a priority. And if you're worrying about everybody else more than yourself, that's the first place you start. Love yourself for your soul mission, your soul path, and all the lives that you have encountered that brought you to this point, because it's all for a reason. None of it was just because. Take a deep breath and walk into your power and sit with it. Begin to recall all the pieces of your soul lost along the way, because you just give them away to people that are stronger or more courageous in that moment that you think that you can't be, but you could. Who are you? Who are you? Do you know? I know when I went through this, I had to, it took me months. It took me a really long time to realize who I was and that, and for that to feel comfortable because I had lived under the label of nurse for so long. I didn't, I didn't ever even really consider myself like a daughter or a mom or a wife. Like I, I those never really stuck, but nurse did. And I was always the nurse and that's just how I identified myself. And then when I realized that was a toxic career and, and ripping my soul apart, I had to let that go and then redefine who I was. I had to get to know me again. I didn't, I had to go through this whole learning process of who am I? What makes me happy when I have time to be happy? When I take time to be happy, what actually makes me happy? It's a journey. And I invite you to start this today. The choices that affect your energy ultimately end up affecting your life. So if you have encountered beings and you know every time you encounter them you feel a certain way and it's not good that's where you start 
you just got to let those people fall away or you, and then you cut the cords and the attachments to them or vice versa. When you cut the cords and the attachments, those that have been siphoning your energy are going to get really pissed off. They're going to come after you. And I mean that in a way of they're going to start to woo you. They're going to give you all, they're going to pour the sugar on, right? They're going to be super, super sweet. And they're going to um, make you feel like you're the best thing next to sliced bread. And immediately you're going to start to feel drained again. And you're going to go, shit, I fell for this again. And then you just free will choice your way out of that situation. Wiser, LFG the whole thing and keep moving forward. I hope that this little chat about toxic people helps you redefine what truly is in your highest and best good. Learn that it is okay. It is in fact advocated that you take care of yourself, that you heal yourself, you love yourself, you forgive yourself, and you are grateful for all that you're able to do because that is what the divine wants for us. True, sovereign, loving, compassionate, kind beings. Take your power back and be happy about it. I'll see you next time for our next talk about letting go. Take care.